Alpha team report. What's happening, Heather? Nothing. You lost both teams? Get a grip on this operation, Heather. That's bored. Green light, yes, sir. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. We will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to pick the law. We enforce them. But at the end of the day, each and every member should go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan Liberty for All. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is August 31st, 2016, the last day of August. This year's been flying by. Um, So thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We are on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday, live from Las Vegas, Nevada at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. And you can listen live on Spreaker.com and nonpartisanlibertyforall.com into the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom. Exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. And of course, we are always happy to hear from you and you can reach us via phone at 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. Or via Skype, username Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Just send a uh, user request and your name and what you want to talk about, and we will accept that and get you on the air. And check us out at Nonpartisan Liberty for All dot com, which includes the links to all of our social media as well as the phone number, contact information, uh, Skype username if you forget that. And original articles, uh, blogs, uh, and other things to check out there. And that's nonpartisan liberty for all. One of the other things there is you can donate if you have any free money. Uh, <laughs> I guess no money is, nobody has free money. But if you would like to donate to the show, it's much appreciated as the show is 100% self-funded by my day job um so real quick before we get to our main topic i wanted to mention uh tomorrow's show and i changed it last minute because i found out about this today as did everybody else that is uh concerned with this issue and I think you can be you should be concerned with this issue regardless of whether or not you are a user of this uh I wouldn't even call it a drug this plant. So the DEA uh announced that they would be banning or they would be schedule wanting same thing, which is the the worst possible, you know, it's schedule. The DEA has schedule one through five, one meaning that it has no medical use. And the penalties are, of course, the highest when it comes to the criminal penalties. And this is just getting fucking ridiculous. What they are doing 
especially with the absence of marijuana um, in a lot of states now, and they're not going, uh, well, they still seem to be going hard after it in other places, but it's definitely cut into their uh, profit, I'm sure, that the DEA gets from confiscation of of uh, money and different things uh, with the states that have legalized marijuana and all of the medical marijuana uh, places across the country. And eventually, I mean, it's not long. They, they know that it's not long until it's legal everywhere. Now, first of all, uh, the U.S. government has no say anyway when it comes to drugs per the constitution but they don't listen to it anyway kratom i call it kratom because it sounds better but it, it's people call it kratom or uh, different people pronounce it differently um is a it's a hundred percent plant it's a plant that comes out of thailand but it's other places too um bali um, I'm trying to think of the names of it because the names are based on where it's coming from. Um, in Indonesia, probably a lot of the same places that m- different marijuana is coming from. So what they do is they take this plant. They claim it has opioids. It does not. It does not have opioids, although it has chemicals similar to opioids. It has, what is the name of the chemical? I have it written. Um, I can't even really pronounce it. It's mitrogen and 7-hydroxymitrogen. So, and they call it a opioid in there. Uh, I have their document here um, of the placement. Temporary, they call it temporary, but I doubt it will be temporary. But it's it's titled temporary placement of uh, mitro the, the two chemicals I just said into Schedule One. So right now, this is something that is sold at uh, I guess that we would call them head shops or tobacco shops, and you can buy it online as well. And in really, it's literally as far as I know, there are no additives. They just take the leaves. And they crush them up into a powder. And then most people uh, buy the pill form and then they put it into a pill. You can even make them yourself if you buy the powder. And I did that before because I couldn't find the uh, the actual pills at the website I was at. And I think it was cheaper to just buy the powder and you know put it into the pills yourself. But it, it, that's all they do. It's, it's 100% natural. It's not considered even a drug. So it's not regulated by the FDA. So the DEA can just do whatever the fuck they want. They don't have to pass a law. They don't have to do anything. So all these people, number one, that have businesses, um, there's a lot of online businesses. And again, all the uh, head shops sell them. I don't know how much money they make off it. It is expensive. Uh, But they claim that they got more calls from basically their argument. I'll, I'll talk all about this tomorrow is they got more calls from the poison center um, between 2010 and 2015. And really that people are using it. This was one of the things too. And, and this is one of the main reasons people are using it to get off methadone and things like that, because it does have a opiate like feeling if you take enough of it. So it's a way to help addicts by using uh, a non-addictive and pure plant. And it's a way to help them to get off other shit. And there's a lot of people uh, that, well... I guess enough. I've heard a lot of uh, accounts of people on on uh, YouTube and and articles that have gotten off painkillers that way, and you know, take uh, kratom. And it's again, it's a totally natural, um, uh, unaddictive substance. I don't even think you can OD off it, to be honest, because. I have my reasons why I believe that it's similar. And 
in my opinion, to be honest, from all the things, um, you know, I've tried marijuana a number of times. I, I haven't done it in, you know, d- really 20 years, actually. Um, it wasn't my thing. Uh, but from everything I hear about marijuana, it doesn't give you the same, uh, it's not the same effects, but it's very similar in that you can it's a totally natural plant and it's pretty much used the the same way um i think people can smoke it but they either take it in pill form mostly or drink it in tea so it's and if it becomes a of course illegal in the united states they'll make it illegal all over the world and then what will happen is people will find another drug uh I doubt right away it will be readily available on the black market, so people will turn to things like heroin. It's the same with painkillers. It's if pe- people can't get painkillers, I mean, I did a whole show on this. They attribute all the heroin uh, abuse to painkillers. Well, if people could fucking get painkillers, then they wouldn't have a problem. It, it's ridiculous. The government. Uh, essentially, when it comes to drugs, or and it's not even a drug, when it comes to any substance, can do whatever the fuck they want. Literally. The DEA just said, hey, we're going to do this. So what are they going to do? They're going to end up busting all these head shops, busting all these websites, and then they got another drug that they can get arrests on, which to me is all kidnapping all bullshit and then at some point you got another black drug on the black market you got more crime that is um a a factor or a a result of making it illegal it's just just leave it the fuck alone they shouldn't be making anything else illegal. It's like, stop it. They did the same thing, you know, bath salts and or synthetic marijuana, whatever you want to call it. And the whole re- and I'm not saying that shit ain't dangerous, but the whole fucking reason why people started doing that was because they couldn't get the other stuff. Now, crotum is an all natural thing and you're going to drive people to things like heroin. And maybe that's what the government wants. But I think the two things are, you know, they don't want people getting off of drugs themselves. They want to document it. They want people to be forced to go to rehab so they can get money and insurance companies can make money. And they all fucking make money. You know, Um, any drug being illegal, of course, the government makes money. You know, they bust drug dealers. They bust people. They make money, whether it's from paying fines, from whatever. So the whole thing is fucking ridiculous. And they can schedule one it, even though it can be used for pain. They just, it's not something that anyone's ever done the research on. And they just, because there's no money in it. Um, At least there's no money as far as they can't control it. Like the pharmaceutical companies can't uh, control it because it's a plant that can be grown and all you need is the plant. And it just fucking, you know, that's it. It's the same reason that marijuana has been, or cannabis has been illegal for so many years and they never used it to treat people because the money, there's no money for them in it. People can grow their own marijuana. And I'm sure people, you know, even though it's grown in uh, Thailand and all these other countries, that with all the uh, innovations in uh, growing things um, like hydroponics or whatever or being able to grow things in um, indoors and I don't know a lot about that. So but I just know that there's been a lot of innovations in that. And I'm sure people could grow it here and it would be just as, as good. So, or just as, as potent. So anyone who 
as a user of Kratom, I would stock up. You have until September 30th. Um, I know that there's a petition out there. Uh, I signed the petition and also that they're going to try to get an injunction from a court. And I think that's the only way to stop the DEA because Congress can't do anything except, I I guess, revoke. um, The the DEA, of course, shouldn't exist and all drugs should be legal. And I'm getting fucking sick of of this shit, to be honest with you. When it comes to you know, taking more and more uh, things away. It's like, okay, so I think the number, I saw two different numbers. I saw, you know, like 400 or 300 people calling, the, but their number was like 600. So 600 people called the Poison Center about uh, Kratom. So what? And probably... All of them were, you know, fucked up and scared and like, oh, did I take too many or whatever? Um, I don't think you can OD off it, to be honest. Just like marijuana. How many deaths do you have from marijuana um, of people ODing? So they claim there's 15 related deaths on one channel, which I think is bullshit because I think it's they were taking other stuff because the one, one death... Uh, that I read about on a another from another source, they were on something else, and just because they happen to take kratom as well, it could have had nothing to do with it. Uh, their death, it was a hundred percent on the other thing they took. Just like they blame, it's always you know the heroin or the opiates that uh, they put on people. And they leave out the fact that, well, they also did cocaine and this and that and the mixture. um, But there's no comparison of Kratom to opiates except the fact that it can help you with opiate addiction. So it's insane. All, All they're doing is just making things worse for people. And they're doing it for money power and control everything's money power and control and i'm so sick of this fucking country and this fucking government and i would to be honest i would just leave the fucking country not because of this it's just everything um you know this is just one tiny thing but it just keeps building up and then they pass this law and that law and that law and there's nowhere to go though because one most of these countries obey the u.s especially if they don't have nuclear weapons. And the U.S. can find you wherever you go. I guess if you go somewhere and they're not looking for you, um, there'd be no reason for them to come find you. But, I mean, then you're dealing with another government, and that's the whole point. Now, if you could find a place where... And see, I'd feel wrong doing this. But if you could find a place where there's not a powerful government in place and you could go there and through protesting and uh, communicating with the local people, make it a freer place and get less and less government until you basically dissolve the government, then I would go do that you'd have a much better chance in another country of getting to a point where you have almost no government or very, very limited uh, government. But that's not going to happen here. I would even rather be at a place where you could just, you know, maybe they have stricter laws, but you can just pay people off or they don't enforce them. Or, you know, here... If you're measuring, like, strictness of a place... U.S. is number one. I mean, you are uh, treated like a fucking kid being punished and that has very strict parents. And it's just it's ridiculous. Anyway, we'll talk all about that tomorrow uh, because I think it's very important to talk about. So I don't want to get too much into it today. I just wanted to 
let everybody know that that's their plan and that they can do that with anything at any time. So remember that. Anyway, today we're going to talk all about uh, transsexuals. (laughs) I know it sounds fun. And not just transsexuals, but transsexual rights, freedoms, and how that relates to the government. Also, how a lot of, uh, or I shouldn't even call them transsexuals, transgenders, uh, transgender people, whatever, whatever they want to be called, I'm fine with that to an extent. We'll get into some pretty weird fucking shit that just, it, it gets to a point where people are just in another world to me um, as far as what they're asking. And uh, I don't know. Uh, you'll understand when we get to that point. But. You have, of course, the bathroom uh, thing. We'll talk about that. And the majority of uh, transgender people are big time feminist or what they now call, I guess this is a mini- millennial word, uh, SJW, social justice warriors. Um, I don't like to use that word. I think it sounds fucking stupid. But progressives, um, people that want really the government to just control everything and protect everybody and all of that. So they in general are a, I wouldn't say scary group, but supposedly they're 0.3% of the population. So, I mean, how many people is that really? Although, again, when you have a country with, you know, 300, 320 million, which is, I always say every time I say it is way too big, because if you think that you have, I mean, you don't have any control in your state, never mind your federal government. And that's where a world government would just be the elites making the decisions, because why even bother giving people a vote because how would a vote of 8 billion people and your one vote mean anything? Just like the uh, president, of course. Speaking of uh, drugs, as I was talking about earlier, uh, of course, Mr. Trump's going to save everybody because he's going to build that big wall that's going to stop all drugs because, you know, that's worked um, the past what 40 years you know stopping drugs because if you all you got to do is one thing and uh, block off one country and there you go right anyway um fucking pompous ass it's just i feel like sometimes that i'm like in not a dream but it's like a big fucking joke and that i'm watching the wwe or whatever and everybody else is watching it too but they think it's reality you know they think that people like trump and hillary and the presidential elections and all this shit like they actually have a say it's not rigged it's not um controlled and they have a say in what happens and it's not an illusion of freedom that they have all this freedom and it's just yeah it's fucked up anyway um i think today will be a much more relaxed show compared to um, some of the shows I've done but uh, you'll see so I started watching some of these transgender videos um, because to be honest so there are a lot I'll be honest there, there are a lot of transgender women or guides to girls. So they're girls. Well, they're not totally girls now, but they look like girls. 
And there's a lot of ones that are cute because they totally look like girls. And you wouldn't know that they used to be a man or that they still have uh, different genitals or that they still have male uh, genitals. So the question comes up, and of course, for me, it's no, although... I dated a girl who I'm pretty sure, because we didn't mess around, luckily, and it was it only lasted like a few weeks, but I, I'm pretty sure she was a transsexual. Now, I don't know if the proper definition of transsexual is actually after they had the operation, other, otherwise it would be pre-op transsexual, but they just say transsexual for even... Uh, people who haven't had the operation who had just had hormones and a lot of them actually look good but some of them it's uh the voice but there's some that uh in some of the clips that i'll play uh this one girl who uh is huge on youtube i don't know how she just came out of nowhere and she's getting you know four hundred thousand views on her videos uh, Blair White, who is uh, looks like a girl, and she's very attractive, but she has penis, and <laughs> she has male parts. So, of course, the question comes up. She was talking to her friend on a show. They did, like, a show, and another uh, transsexual, and her friend was like, well... You know, it doesn't matter anyways. A lot of guys even like that stuff. And I'm like, well, to me, I would say that they're gay. I mean, or have some gay tendencies. Now, in this world, I guess, you know, and watching um, these videos, because I first I started watching uh, her short videos. They were interesting and then I saw some of her longer interviews. It's entertaining, um, to be honest, because they get into, you know, these deep discussions and stuff like that about um, uh, transsexuals. And, and it goes into, to me, tells me a lot about millennials, which is kind of scary. And it also... I guess gives me some insight into what's going on in, you know, from high school to, you know, five to 10 years after that uh, age group, you know, the 18 to 25 or something, um, which I, I don't really know. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not, connected to that anymore um you know so anyway she had said you know like what's the big deal and you know it's just uh I I believe Blair White had said well it's just you know there shouldn't be a big deal it's just different parts and the other girl said most guys you know don't care or want like that anyway and it is a fucking big deal, okay? That's why I'm like, is it real? I mean, now, granted, you know, she is very attractive, but I don't care what a girl looks like. I mean, the girl that I dated that I'm pr- I'm almost positive she was transsexual. I guess I'll go into the story in a minute. But this Blair White girl, I mean, she is very uh, attractive, uh, at least, you know, I don't know what she looks like without makeup on, because, of course, in her videos, you know, she's all done up and everything. I mean, she could look scary without makeup. I don't know. But she's on hormones and been on hormones and everything. And her voice, um, you can, after I knew that she still had a, a male genitals, It's like I could tell more that her voice, but she still, her voice sounds like a girl's voice. Um, And that's kind of how I I came to think the girl I was uh, seeing, 
it wasn't damn it it was before um my fiance so we've been together four years already so it was actually a couple months before i met her so um it's been a little over four years but if um she would have admitted that she was a a transsexual it would have been done right there um because i'm not attracted to girls with penises it's funny there's a line in in ted and i don't like to get uh you know talk about graphic sex or anything like that and not that this is a joke about graphic sex but i don't really get into um you know that stuff although on the show you know i say fuck all the time and not all the time but i mean it's a show where you could say whatever you want but it's not a dirty show um it's more in describing what i'm talking about i'll say you know fuck this or whatever and i want it to be free like that i wouldn't i would never be on a radio station if they ever asked me which i doubt would happen but listening to some of the radio out there like that wayne allen douchebag um who's locally on here you know if they got people like that on the radio who knows but um i would never be on there because i want to be able to say what i want but in um it was in ted too he said because i guess his uh for people who haven't seen ted too his computer was open and he had all this porn on it because he hadn't dated in like six months and he said it's not chicks with dicks it's guys with tits um which was kind of funny but that is a big deal um You know, and that's great that they met, you know, they claim that they met straight men and uh, meaning that, um, which I'm sure is true, that before they had met their boyfriends, that they hadn't, at least they say that they hadn't had any, you know, that they're not gay. They hadn't dated guys or they hadn't dated girls with uh, male parts. But she ha- she's never gone into, like, does he do, and I don't want to get graphic, but, you know, does he do anything um, with her male parts? Because she has even said that she doesn't know if she wants the uh, the full operation. So I guess there's two questions here. Um, I doubt anybody's going to call in, but questions that I would ask people, and my answer, of course, is no on both accounts. But there, there's two scenarios. I guess one is a girl that would be a pre-op transsexual who still had male genitals or male genitalia if a guy would date them or if they were planning to get a sex change, if they would just wait to... Um, do anything in that area until they went through with the operation or what about someone who's fully uh, who's had the operation and now has female genitalia but of course it's not the same Um, and you know, I don't know what they do in there. I know uh, I've heard something that they use, you know, it, the, I guess the skin in, and again, I don't want to be too graphic, but in the, the skin of the testicles is the same as the skin, I believe, of the labia and the skin of the penis is the same as the skin of the cl- clitoris. So I th- they do something and they put the penis inside or something like that. I don't know because they try to create it where they can still have sensation, obviously, uh, you know, after, because that would suck 
if they had an operation and then after they didn't feel anything, um, period. I, I know, you know, right after, but I mean, after like for the rest of their lives. So anyway, the, the question would be, would somebody, because I, I, I think that if you date a girl who has male genitalia, there's something, I wouldn't say you're full on gay, but you're kind of gay. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how to, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, and I guess it depends on what you do with them, but still, I mean, that's, I would not date a girl who had male genitalia and I would not date a girl who used to be a guy, even if they had a full, you know, operation and everything. But then you go to what if you didn't know and it was a girl that they fully transformed into a girl. Um, They had the operation and everything and you didn't know. And then say you found out years later and you were in love with that person. That's where I think it, it gets tricky. But I think it's unfair not to tell somebody. And what happened with me was I met this girl online at, at like a dating site. And she was really pretty. But when I talked to her on the phone, her voice was kind of, you know, she didn't like sound like a guy, but she had sort of a a voice, like a tranny voice almost. Like you could, I, I think people know what I mean. So I talked to her on the phone and I was trying to hint at stuff to ask, you know, she was really cool and everything. And I guess she knew I was doing that because finally when I I agreed to meet her um, and I had asked, it took me a while. And, and she was like, yeah, I could tell you were trying to do that, you know, on the phone. Because I'd ask, oh, you know, do you want kids or whatever? And... Or things like um, that would maybe bring it out. And she had said, I swear I am a girl. I've always been a girl. You know, all this shit. So I'm like, you know, I went through it for a while. And then I'm like, all right. Because she was, she was really cool. She was pretty um you know we got along whatever so things didn't end up working out anyway and I still had doubts and then and the one one of the things was and I'm glad she wouldn't kiss me which was just weird like we went and hung out um we actually went to Laughlin and we got like a room with two beds. So we didn't like sleep in the same bed, but she wouldn't um, kiss me at all. So I'm like, okay. And she said, Oh, cause of my last relationship and whatever. And, and, and I'm thinking like, well, your last relationship, it, probably got fucked up because when you told him that you have a a dick um he left but so it didn't work out but then after i i was like i i wanted to know so she had told me and, and then she twisted it around on me and said i'm like a stalker or something but i'm like how how can i figure this out you know online let me try to look up some information so she had told me that she had a couple sisters and her sisters were on Facebook, on her Facebook, and she was using like a different name or something. But she told me that. And 
she also had told me that her mother died in Hawaii and she had two sisters. So I somehow found the obituary to her mother's death. And I knew her sister's names. And then it said the youngest, and I think she said she was the youngest. And it was, uh, it said a, a boy, and it said the name. So it said she had two girls and a boy. And then I looked up just uh, her sister's. And, you know, when you go to those sites that will, you know, I think I paid like 10 bucks or something. You can do background checks and stuff like that. Uh, But this you don't even have to pay for. It shows who's related. And her name never came up Um, or no name. No other girl's name with that last name came up. It was just that same name, the guy's name. So, I mean... You know, I'm 99.9% sure that obviously that's her. And then I had called her and said, who's, you know, whatever. And she said, oh, my uncle. I think because the phone number she had, that's the name that came up, too. That's what it was. That her phone was registered to that name. And I'm like, okay, it's obvious. And then she's like, what, you were stalking me and whatever. And and maybe she was scared because I knew where she lived. And I'm like, no, I'm like, just so you know, you know, I'm not going to do anything and I'm not mad. I just think it's fucked up. I mean, you shouldn't lie to people. And I understand, I guess, why they would lie. But the whole thing is, if I never would have asked, that's one thing. But the fact that I asked and she had or he had essentially swore that she wasn't a guy was pretty fucked up, you know? Um, Even if she didn't want to tell me then because she was scared, you know, there are some crazy guys out there that maybe would have, you know, hit her or something or you know i wouldn't have done anything i just would have been i i probably would have stayed friends with her to be honest i would have just been like okay we can be friends but you know that's as far as it can go because i'm not gonna you know i'm not into shit like that so um yeah <laughs> so that's as far as it goes but i would have stayed friends if she was honest um Although by the end, I I don't think she wanted to be friends with me um, anyway. Um, And at that point, I didn't want to be friends with her neither because she lied to me. But um, I got all drunk when we were in uh, Laughlin and and was just kind of fucked up, I guess. Um, But the point being that, you know, the do you are you honest about that shit? And should they be honest? I, I understand People are scared and, you know, there are more um, shows out there and more like there's um, and we'll get into this uh, issue. There's I I think she's 15 now, but they did a story on her when she was 10, uh, Jazz Jennings, and she has a like reality show now. And she started taking hormones before puberty. And there's some other stories like that. And I think more people, though, are being exposed to transsexuals and more accepting. Because I guess my thoughts on it are that... You know, people can do whatever. I I believe in, of course, in freedom and freedom for all people. And whatever they want to do, that's up to them. If they feel that they're in the wrong body and they want to take hormones or have a full on sex change, that is totally up to them. And I have no problem with that. I don't look differently. I I mean, I, I look differently only in the sense of dating. But that's it. I mean, I would be friends with somebody that is transgender. I have no problem with that. Um, Or, you know, 
any other thing than date them or be intimate with them. And that's, you know, my choice. Now, if somebody, if I had a friend that dated someone that was trans- transgender, I wouldn't have an issue with that neither. So, and and that's the whole thing about, you know, believing in, in true freedom and liberty is that you can choose to live your life how you want. And it may be totally different from how somebody else chooses to live their lives. But as long as you both believe in the freedom to live your life how you want, then in a way you believe in the same concepts, but you don't believe in the same way of, say, living your life. But it doesn't matter because that's not the point of it. So... Like, there's certain things where I, of course, think prostitution should be legal. I think drugs should be legal. I I think there shouldn't really be a government. There should just be an organized society. But that doesn't mean that I want to date someone who is a prostitute that, uh, you know, does drugs all the time. So, although I support their right to use it, you know, the freedom is about to live your life how you want and also to associate with who you want. I mean, you can look at uh, transgender people and say, look, they can do whatever they want, but I don't want anything to do with them. And that doesn't mean that you don't support freedom. The only thing I would say... Well, no, I mean, you still support freedom. I was going to say, if you have your own business and you won't hire them, I mean, that's still your choice and your uh, freedom to hire who the fuck you want. So freedom of association is still freedom. And that doesn't mean that you're not, you don't support freedom. You actually support freedom if you support a business owner's right to do what they want. Now, it's totally different the way things are now because everything is, you know, corporatism and uh, crony capitalism and all of that. When you're talking about, you know, smaller businesses and stuff like that, different businesses will have different practices and people will know what businesses discriminate against who and things like that. And so you'll be able to actually have an effect on that business if you think that they're discriminating and they shouldn't be. But they have that right to say, you know, they don't want to hire transsexuals. I'm, and I'm just using them as an, as an example because that's what we're talking about. So even if they don't want to associate with transsexuals, that's still as long as they don't try to stop them from living their lives the way they want to live their lives. That's it. That's what 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 freedom is about. And your freedom, you don't have a right for somebody to give you a job, in my opinion, or to work at a specific place. That's up to the owners of that place. Again, I think right now things are really fucked up because of the government and how they have created an environment where they've gotten rid of so many small businesses through uh, corporatism and crony capitalism. Um, So the government will do things to keep out the competition and allow corporations to dominate a market. So I could see how people look at that and say, like Walmart, like how are you going to stop Walmart? It's, you know, even if you get a certain amount of people to stop shopping there. Well, in a organized society without a government, you wouldn't have a business as big as Walmart because it wouldn't be possible. You wouldn't be able to borrow money that doesn't exist, first of all, because 
we're, with fractional reserve banking and all of that, I mean, it allows all these companies to have unlimited access to unlimited amounts of money and just keep getting loans. And it's, it's, that's a whole nother show. And we've talked about some of those things before, but, but anyway, um, so I thought that was fucked up that she didn't tell me and whatever, but I'm pretty much open to, as far as being friends with people as long as they believe in true freedom and liberty and don't try to tell me how to live my life. Um, and of course, you know, they're an honest and trustworthy person. I'll, I'll be friends with anybody. Um, and those I've said before, those are my people, the people that believe in, you know, freedom and liberty at the same time, you know, of course, aren't going to rob me or <laughs> shit like that, too, um, because that wouldn't be good. So I understand that they have a, you know, dilemma there. It's like, when do you tell somebody? So I was watching one of these videos and it was a transition from a girl to a guy. And he was like, well, when do I tell this girl and, you know, he came out, he was younger. He was like 17 or something. And he came out and he told her on the second date. I think with girls, it's a lot different, to be honest, because it's more acceptable for girls to be with girls. And I think not just that, it's more social, that it's more socially acceptable, that and this is a generalization, I think a girl would put, a lot of girls may put love before that, but there's plenty of girls that would say no because of that. Like, I don't want to, <laughs> I want a guy who's a guy. Um, but it seems like when it comes to the millennials, um, that they're more open to a lot of this stuff. At the same time, I mean, that's good and bad. It's good in the way that to be more accepting of people, I believe. But when you get into laws, that's a whole nother story. But um, going back to the, the telling someone, I mean, There have been people murdered, um, I guess in 99, a soldier was murdered for dating a trans uh, girl. Now that's, geez, that's almost, what, 15, no, it's, it is, it's 16, 17 years ago now. But, um, and there was a girl that was murdered because she messed around with a couple guys. I, I think she may have had the operation and, um four guys killed her but two of the guys she had messed around with and they went and buried her body so now those are two incidences out of you know millions of interactions but it's you know people can get very angry over stuff like that i think as i was saying i think people are more accepting and definitely millennials, but it also depends on where in the country you're at as well. Um, religion has a lot to do with it. I watched a show on purpose where it was a religious show, and the whole idea of the show was where they were talking about transsexuals and their thoughts on them, and of course, are they going to hell and whatever. It, they their answer to everything is just don't act on it. It's like, okay, you can uh, want to be a girl, but just don't uh, actually do it. So live your life miserable and, you know, fuck them. If that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do and whatever. Now, the issue I have is, and I learned all these new words and 
some of this shit is just really weird because they get into that there's more than two genders and we'll talk about that a little later and i'm like okay and then we're not talking about people that uh, you know the hermaphrodites are people that have genetic uh abnormalities they're talking about it was really ridiculous like people that just consider themselves a third gender and it's not really based on much i'll get into that later but that doesn't even really i just think it's stupid if you want to call yourself whatever non-gender or there, there was a word for it uh that covers all of it um i'll get to that later but um and some people were calling themselves gender queer uh non-binary if you want to call yourself that Again, you have the freedom to call yourself that. I don't give a fuck. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me, and I'll explain it. But it's a lot of these, um, a lot of the transgender, uh, I guess they call themselves community, but people, whatever, um, are hardcore feminists, third wave feminists, and are which is kind of weird in some of the ways because they're especially the ones that don't know what gender they want they want to be and ones that are girls that want to be guys but they're still hardcore feminists that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me but i mean you can be a guy i guess and be a feminist um just like you can uh, protest racism you don't have to be of the race that's you're protesting for so the thing that of course bothers me or that where it would uh come into the purpose of the show is when they get the government involved in stuff and that's the group not all transgender people the ones that are the progressives and the third wave feminists and that they're the ones that want to get the laws and government and all of that involved in this stuff and of course the bathroom thing is the first of it now, what I'm going to do now is take a, a break and play some of the clips that I have. And then when we come back, we'll get into the government side of it and the law side of it. And then I'll also talk about this ridiculous third gender thing that, again, I, you know, I support if you want whatever the fuck gender you want to call yourself but it's it's when does it get to you know getting out of reality and being ridiculous and not having to and you know when does it get to a point where yeah you have the freedom to call yourself that but it's fucking ridiculous so we'll talk about that as well um, when we come back. And of course, as always, check us out at nonpartisan liberty for all.com. We have all the links to uh, our social media, which like us on Facebook. It was actually for our Facebook pages. You'll see all the links at nonpartisan liberty for all.com and Twitter, as well as read the series that is still unfinished, but I think there's about six articles on the war on drugs and how things should go back to how they were prior to 1914 when they first passed the first drug law. Not only the first drug law, but the first law where the government told you what you can and cannot put in your body. And remember that, that that's about self-ownership and telling you what you can put in your body. That's the issue. Um, you don't have to want to use a drug to defend people's rights to use it. So 
We'll be back right after this. Nonpartisanlibertyforall.com Are you looking for a podcast that talks about life, the universe, and everything? Listen in to the Illumination Hour, Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Listen live at Spreaker.com or NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. We're also on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube, and iTunes. The Illumination Hour, brought to you by Nonpartisan Liberty for All Media and Radio Network. And your host, Ellen Stallone. Because a spark can illuminate the world. Okay, it's quite a topical issue recently, so we need to fucking talk about pronouns. Pronouns are words which take the space of a noun, so instead of saying the clunky sentence, Holly went to the shop and Holly bought a can of drink, you could say, Holly went to the shop and they bought a can of drink. You would say they because I use they them pronouns. Let's get down to the fucking basics. You use the pronouns that someone wants you to use that correspond with the gender they identify as. I'm personally a gender. I use they them pronouns. To use other pronouns for me is just fucking wrong. They they, them isn't my preferred pronouns, they are my pronouns. If you're not using them, you're just referring to me incorrectly. You wouldn't refer to the cis guy you went to high school with as she, because obviously he doesn't use she, her, hers pronouns. And just as using the wrong pronouns for someone who is cis, meaning cisgender, meaning identifying with the gender they were assigned at birth as, is offensive, it is even more offensive to transgender people. But why would it be more offensive? Because it's a fucking act of aggression and disrespect against someone who probably already endures multiple acts of erasure, disrespect and violence in their everyday life just because of how they identify and live. Okay? It's not okay. Let's take Caitlyn Jenner, for example, who recently just came out as trans and was on the cover of Vanity Fair, as everyone probably knows, because it's a very hot topic right now. To refer to Caitlyn as anything other than she, her, herself is wrong. Even if you're referring to her 20, 30 years ago, she is a she, she identifies as a she, she is always been a she. She is just only now allowed to actually identify and present that way. Misgendering people through the implied gender of pronouns can be extremely hurtful and cause extreme gender dysphoria in people. And guess what? You don't know if someone you have just met might be trans, might just use different pronouns, or might experience gender dysphoria. You fucking, you don't know that. So, guess what you do to avoid gendering them? You use neutral pronouns. Wow, who would have thunk it? The most common pronouns which are considered neutral are they, them, their, themselves, before you jump in with, but them is plural, you use that to refer to more than one person. No, you don't always. It can also be singular. Fucking ask a linguist, you're wrong. You probably already use they, them as a singular pronoun. You just don't realize it. Imagine your friend just got off the phone with a doctor and you don't know who their doctor is. You would say, oh no, what did they say? There we go, you just used it singularly. Things not to do, do that goddamn S dash he, she, he thing. That's just silly and incorrect and offensive. Or use it. Some people might use it pronouns, uh, but normally it's considered extremely dehumanizing and really awful because guess what? People aren't objects. Now you might be going, oh, but if I'm supposed to not gender people, how do I know what gender they are and how to refer to them? Guess what? You ask them? Don't just say, are you a boy or a girl? Because some people are neither, and also that might be none of your fucking business. But you can start out by saying, hi, uh, sorry, what pronouns do you use? If they don't understand what you're saying, good chance to give them a little education in transgender issues. Asking people's pronouns should definitely be common etiquette. And what do you do if you misgender someone? Just quickly apologize and correct yourself as you would do with one of your cis friends. Okay, I've gotta go back to my life of being a terrifying trans person that's gonna uproot the government and change marriage. And just real quick, I mean, being, let's even say they're 1% of the population, and this includes people that just call themselves the third gender i'm not gonna ask people like what are your fucking pronouns and shit like that's 
and I'll talk more about this when we get back, but they, that's where it's starting to get kind of ridiculous um, to, you know, if somebody is transitioning from a man to a woman and they want you know you to refer to them as she and whatever that's fine or vice versa that's fine but this whole well refer to me as whatever um them or something and it's that's where it gets you know a little ridiculous but We'll get back to that. Actually, I've got to go do my washing and write some essays because it's exam period. Um, hope you're all having a lovely day. Hope you'll be nice in the comments. If you don't, I'll probably delete them. <laughs> okay, see you later. A federal judge has blocked the state's controversial transgender bathroom law from being enforced at the University of North Carolina. The ruling means the school must allow two students and an employee to use restrooms matching their gender identity. CNN's Ariane DeVogue is in Washington for us, though the ruling only blocks part of the state's law, and North Carolina's governor says the law is still fully in effect. So explain all of this. Well, you know, this case shows that there is a new frontier now in LGBT uh, litigation, and that's transgender rights. What this judge did, as you said, is he temporarily blocked North Carolina's controversial bathroom uh, law only for three individuals. That's two students and an employee at the University of North Carolina. What this judge said is, look, North Carolina could very well be caught between a state law and a federal law. And of course, North Carolina takes public funds. So the judge said, look, I'm going to put a halt to this now until I can have uh, a full trial and hear this case on the merits. In the meantime, um, I will temporarily block it just for these three plaintiffs. So it looks like a limited ruling, but groups like Lambda Legal, the ACLU, they hope it's going to be the first step for this judge, um, and they hope he'll eventually uh, strike down the entire law. Mm -hmm. And of course, on the other side, supporters say that the law was necessary for privacy reasons. I have never made a coming out video because the entire time I've been making videos on YouTube, I've been trying to figure out my gender identity and sexuality and finding different ways to express them. Because I went through the questioning process in various YouTube videos, I have used a lot of different labels to describe my gender and sexuality online, which has put me up to a lot of criticism. I am a polygender, gender fluid, etc. Mm, non-binary person. Because some people think it's ridiculous that I could have used more than one label to describe my gender in my lifetime. I first started making YouTube videos when I identified as a cisgender girl. The latest Becoming YouTube series video was about girls on YouTube and in case you hadn't noticed, I mean, I mean there's pink all around me, I mean not meaning to be stereotypical but... And I also was figuring out my identity as being pansexual, that meant I was immersing myself in the LGBT community and trying to figure out how to be an ally to all the different labels inside of the community. Although I wasn't always the best ally. I sort of had a very basic understanding of a lot of concepts. I don't get how anyone could be hurtful or mean to anyone just because they feel they are born in the wrong body. It does not make sense. Yesterday was day of silence, and it was super amazing. When I first came out to my mom, it was as being pansexual. And I remember her distinctively asking me, and being so confused at how I could be attracted to a transgender person. Uh, I was just like, hey mom, do you know what pansexual is? She was like, nope. Like, yeah, well, it means you like someone because their personality and not their gender. My mom would always say a lot of low-key transphobic things, which really bothered me. But I couldn't figure out why they bothered me until what the transgender community was saying about gender started to resonate with me. And I realized that I'm not a girl. 
I um, just started coming out as genderqueer a couple days ago. I'm saying that quietly because there's people in my house that don't know. I originally came out as genderqueer. But since then, my identity has fluctuated somewhere between being non-binary and being a transgender boy. I don't have a word for it. I'm like 75% male, 20% I don't know what, and then like 5% female. I remember being so, so terrified the first time I tried to go to a store to get boys clothing. Even the thought of asking my mom to buy me boys clothing was terrifying. And now, here I am. Totally not afraid to go into the boys section to get a suit, since I can't fit into men's suits. <sighs> my sophomore year, I started at a new high school. And because I didn't want anyone to know my legal name, I started going by a gender-neutral name. Hello, I'm Rory. But after coming out to my mom, she told me she didn't like my choice and name, and voila, now I'm Milo. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Milo. I'm the trans that is featured on the show. Eventually I realized that I'm not actually pansexual when I came out as asexual. I consider my sexuality as a, a romantic asexual person to be very queer. And ever since, people have been trying to change me and make me experience sexual attraction. But that's not a thing. You can't make someone experience sexual attraction. But I've grown to be so comfortable with my sexuality and gender that this year I came out to my entire high school as transgender in our school newspaper. I am proud to be non-binary, transgender, and asexual. This is where, I don't know, it gets weird to me. Um, as far as being asexual, if you're not sexually attracted to somebody, that's you know your business. But coming out in your school newspaper, that's a little weird. Um, just like somebody coming out as gay um, and coming out as transgender. And this is a person who I saw videos on them. And the transgender girls are one of the transgender girls or that went from a boy to a girl was saying that this girl who I guess is becoming a boy isn't even really transgender. They're not, they just dress weird and go back and forth between, I, I don't know. The whole thing is just fucking weird to me. Again, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. But on the other side of that, you know, people have the freedom to react to that. And they don't have the, f the freedom to react in violence or calling somebody names. But um, they do in, well, I guess in calling names, technically they do. But that's not, um, I think, the way to go. And if you, you know, you don't have the right to threaten people or anything like that. But you do have the right to not associate with people. But the whole school paper and that's just weird um i don't know why that the school paper would be printing stuff like that and that's kind of what i'm saying where with the millennials and even shit that goes on in school related to feminism and all the progressive bullshit not in just what they're teaching but in shit like this it's like I, I don't I don't know for something to be in a school to to have the school paper be about oh well here's an article on um I'm coming out as transgender I guess if it was an article on a transgender person to kind of I guess I guess it depends in what context I'm just thinking it of like a list of names here are the people that want you to know they're transgender but I guess if it is in the context of writing an article about being transgender and what your life is like. I guess that's a story. Um, and that doesn't necessarily 
uh, cause an issue. But uh, we'll go back to the clip. But this person is just very fucking weird. I'm sorry. That's my opinion on them. And I'm kind of, believe it or not, in some ways more traditionalist, like personally, but not in what, not in a lot of things, but in certain things. But I'm not somebody on the other side who would tell somebody else how they should live their life and what they should do and none of that. You know, I might not want to be around certain scenes. I'll be honest with that because I'm just not into them. So, like, I don't want to hang out at a gay club. Just not, you know, there's no reason for me to be there. There's nothing there for me. <laughs> so, um, you know, stuff like that. It's just certain things that I would say aren't my scene, but that doesn't mean that I'm against them and I don't believe they should go on. And that's, I think, the difference uh, there. Well, because it's taken a lot, a lot of work and a lot of self-hate for me to get to where I am today, to bring me to a place where I am comfortable with myself in which I love myself, not regardless of my identity, but including my identity. Because my identity is another wonderful aspect of me. I'm also proud to be non-binary because, hey, you know, I look pretty freaking fly in a boy's suit. And I have only been wearing boys' formal wear for a year. And I know how to work it better than some people who have grown up wearing it. Uh, let me just, I mean, uh. people can try to tear us down, but we won't let them. Peace. Cool, 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 cool. Got a new beer. Uh. Gonna jump right back into the last video. No, 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 there's not even time for the intro. Previous video, Ashley, where were we? So now that we know that gender identities can exist outside the binary, let's explore that more. Ah, that's right. Okay, so now that we know that gender identities can exist outside the binary, let's explore that more. Caitlin, can you tell me more about terms like gender queer, gender fluid, androgynous, and demi girl and demi guy? So I want to start off by saying gender can be confusing. It was for me, it was a huge process. It was years in the making for me to figure out exactly why it was I wasn't comfortable with the way that I identified. And that's okay. That's just something that comes with the territory. I'm going to talk about the two things that I personally identify as. That is gender queer androgynous. So gender queer is anything that doesn't fall into the traditional gender roles or gender binary. Gender queer is kind of thought to be synonymous with non-binary, but you can identify as non-binary and not identify as being gender queer. They're not automatically grouped. Most of this shit makes no fucking sense to me, but whatever. Together, you're not automatically falling under this umbrella term, which is what it is. I could just be androgynous without identifying as genderqueer, but genderqueer is something that I like to identify with. The same way as anybody within lesbian, gay, bisexual spectrum can identify as queer, because it all falls under the queer spectrum, or you cannot identify as queer. Totally up to you. So, yeah. And the discussion of genderqueer brings me to androgyny, which is where I fall comfortably in my identity. So physical androgyny is when you mix like female-male characteristics. You'll often hear it talked about um, people in androgynous fashion, androgynous clothing. It's kind of a middle line, which is how I like to look at it. Psychological androgyny can mean that you identify somewhere between the male and female range of gender or that you don't fit into either category. That is totally fine. And that is where I sit in the gender discussion. I feel very comfortable in the middle ground and I've always been very comfortable with that. Gender fluid refers to someone whose gender varies and isn't fixed. Situational gender fluidity means that if you're working out, you feel very masculine and your gender changes while you're in that particular situation. It could mean one day you feel 70% male, one day you feel 70% female. It changes on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the other major ones that I came across when I... 
Right, but your your uh, genitals don't change. So that just, I don't know. You can feel how you want to feel, that you feel more masculine one day or more feminine another day, it, whatever. I don't think that changes your gender. But they're talking about gender identity, not actual gender but it's still it it's a little ridiculous it's not a little ridiculous it's a lot ridiculous to me but again if they want to think that it, you know they can think whatever they want but it almost gets into a point where it, it it's like not really reality it it's how do you even get to and i don't know if somebody i'm sure there's books on this but where they got these kind of ridiculous ideas in the first place. I understand, you know, being androgynous and and people dressing that way in in the 80s, you know, you had uh, even celebrities or or rock stars who were thought of uh, as more androgynous. Um, And they probably, you know, it was on purpose that they dressed that way or had a projected that image but to say well today i feel more male but tomorrow i i'm gonna feel more female the if you have a vagina you're still a female um both days you can feel whatever you want but you know that does not change your your uh, biology. I was researching gender identities, trying to figure myself, was demi girl or demi guy. Now I'm going to talk about this all wrapped in one package because the terms are pretty similar. So. When somebody is a demigirl or guy, it means that they only partially identify with a gender, but don't necessarily identify with another gender. An example could be a female assigned at birth who doesn't fully identify with being female, but doesn't feel a dysphoria attached to it. That is so cool! I didn't know this word before this video, but I love it, I felt it, and I'm happy it's an identity that others connect to as well. I personally have never felt like a man, but I definitely have had moments where I've lacked a really strong connection to a female identity. I'm fluid in this way, sometimes feeling like a woman, sometimes feeling kinda genderless, and sometimes feeling like a combination of those two things. So, demigirl. Cool! I love it! Moving on, Olivia, I hear you know a bit about the terms agender, gender neutral, gender variant, and neutrois. Biological sex is also a spectrum, and the term intersex is used to describe anyone's body that doesn't fit the socially accepted characteristics of male or female anatomy. But remember that sex and gender are different things, so people who are born intersex can have any gender identity. Gender variant is a term used to describe anyone who doesn't conform to the stereotypical gender roles of their society. So even though the term is sometimes used interchangeably with transgender or non-binary, not all gender variant people feel that their gender identity doesn't align with their sex assigned at birth. A good example of this would be a tomboy, who identifies as female but expresses gender in stereotypically masculine ways. So the prefix a in agender implies lack of a gender, and that's how some agender people define the term. And others will define it as more gender neutral. And it's important to note that gender is a super personal thing, so the way that these labels are defined can vary from person to person and identity to identity. So I'm constantly figuring out my gender, which is totally fine, by the way, but right now I feel most comfortable labeling it as agender or gender neutral, which I define as neither male or female. Neutrois is another non-binary gender identity that is commonly defined as gender neutral, genderless, or neither male or female. Many, but not all people who identify as neutrois often feel the need to transition to a neutral gender so that their body physically reflects their gender identity. Transition meaning anything from pronouns, hairstyles, and clothes to hormones or surgery. And of course, transitioning to a neutral gender is not just for people who identify as neutral. So I think it's also important to note that besides robots and shapeshifters, much of the mainstream representation of non-binary individuals is of people like me, androgynous kids with undercuts, basically. 
And while it's completely fine to identify and express gender like this, it's also important to note that some people's gender identities and expressions don't line up. And expressing gender in stereotypically masculine or feminine ways doesn't make anyone less trans or less non-binary. Wow, to be honest, I am learning a ton, but most of these words I have heard before. What about some really, really unique gender identities, like bi-gender, tri-gender, third or other gender, and two-spirit? I wonder if this is something that they're teaching in, like, school now or something, which would be ridiculous as well, because I never heard any of this fucking shit until uh, I watched some of these videos. And it's just, yeah, there are tomboys, there are girls that, you know are manly there are manly you know lesbians that dress like guys but don't have a you know surgery there um so there are people that may do things or dress a way that society would look at as you know male or female when they are the opposite but that doesn't mean anything. To me, that's a girl that's into this or a girl who likes to dress, you know, like this. Uh, you're still a girl or a guy. Now, when you get into the people that actually want to change their gender, that's a whole different issue. Um, but they're talking about what... I, <laughs> I don't know. What they're talking about is just kind of ridiculous. Chase? Two-spirit individuals is become an umbrella term in the indigenous North American community, mostly. And that basically describes anybody who is gender variant. So people who don't identify themselves as male or female, and they're strictly in the indigenous community. So if there's somebody who's in this community and identifies as uh, something completely different than male and female then they would be identified as two-spirit or they would identify themselves as two-spirit. When looking at definitions online and looking at people who've talked about their experiences who are in this community and who identify themselves as two-spirit, there's a lot of difference in the community. So there's some people who either dress male and female and assume the roles of both genders. There's some that are just masculine females, uh, masculine males, but identify themselves as two-spirit. There's some uh, feminine men and feminine women, and it's like all over the gender spectrum and these individuals can identify themselves as two-spirit no matter where they stand as long as they're gender variant like as long as they identify themselves as gender variant bi-gender is when an individual goes between feminine and masculine traits and roles and they move towards them so they can identify themselves as bi-gender because they're not they don't strictly identify as one even if they are female and they can uh you know dress feminine in the way society sees femininity, they can still identify as bi-gender uh, as long as they are, like they identify themselves as bi-gender. And that is really usually the process of an individual just moving towards both traits and both identities and just navigating that entire spectrum. Trigender is much like bi-gender, so it's an individual that moves between feminine and masculine traits and roles, but trigender includes another gender. So it it could include a third gender or an uh, just an other as a gender. So it's a mix of bi-gender and it's a mix of third gender. So those two together make trigender. So it's an individual who can either identify as male, female, or other, and who navigates all of these different identities and moves through these traits and through these roles that you know, society and culture has uh, constructed for us. Okay, I think I get it. Bi-gender people identify with or move between both ends of the gender spectrum. Third or other gender people identify with a totally different gender, and tri-gender people identify with or move between all three of these things. Wow. Is there just an umbrella term I can use for all of this? For everything that isn't cis? Non-binary is one of the most common used terms for people who are gender variant. Non-binary has become an umbrella term, which encompasses many of the identities that we've talked about here. So it can identify um, and include people who are bi-gender, people who are gender variant, uh, people who are androgynous, trigender, and everything else that goes under there. Usually, 
uh, it goes like non-binary and then there's trans people. So some trans people do identify as non-binary, some non-binary people identify as trans, which is completely fine. Just usually non-binary includes all of the other identities that the individual might ident not identify themselves as trans, but they know that within them they're not, they don't identify as one strict gender. So they either move beyond genders, between genders, around genders, different genders, and all of those great identities are under that non-binary umbrella. Hey guys, so one of the things people ask me about pretty often is my opinion on the sort of long list of arbitrary, obscure gender identities that exist out in the world. Things like non-binary, gender fluid, agender, gender queer, gender fuck, um, two spirit. That one always gets me. Two spirit is like a Native American thing. I have no idea why there's so many like millennial white feminists calling themselves two spirits. Uh, I, I don't know. And I think you guys think that I can keep up with them just because I'm a tranny. But let me tell you, just because I'm a tranny does not mean I can keep up with this long list. There's so many things I couldn't even begin to name all of them in this video. And can we please not even go down the rabbit hole that is known as other kin? I, I don't have the energy to talk about it. Not today, not never. So I think this meme pretty much sums up how I feel, but I will go into more detail. So yeah, I think all these identities are largely bullshit. I think they're super arbitrary. I think they're super meaningless. I think people who take them on are usually extremely boring and have nothing else to their personality other than I'm demi-queer, non-binary, gender fuck, special snowflake kin. And if you pay attention to these people, you'll notice that very rarely will you meet someone who identifies as one of these things who is not heavily involved in political activism to some extent who's not a feminist to some extent. And that's because it's usually, not always, but usually a political tactic to take on one of these identities. It's a reach for oppression points. These people are usually middle-class, white, never had to struggle with anything in their life, but they wanna call themselves this oppressed sexual gender minority as a means to silence any type of opposition they have in any type of political conversation. Because in our current political climate, oppression is a very valuable currency. So it's really important to note that there's no basis in science whatsoever for any of these obscure identities. Non-binary, gender fluid, gender queer, none of them have any evidence backing them pointing towards their validity whatsoever. Transgenderism, on the other hand, is neurologically observable. Gender dysphoria is medically diagnosable. And I'm going to put some links down below to some interesting articles about the brain structures within transgender women and how they're similar to biological women. My bra is falling off. So everyone is free to have a self-concept as nuanced as the limits of their imagination can hold. And it's perfectly normal to not feel completely masculine or completely feminine. But there's absolutely no need to label and identify as each varying degree on the long scale between perfectly feminine and perfectly masculine. And trust me, I don't subscribe to the idea that just because someone calls themselves non-binary that they should be treated badly. I think it's really toxic that these days people seem to care more about what you are and what you identify as more than, you know, what what's in your head and what you say, what you do. And that's all about what progressivism is. It's identity politics. So yeah, that's just my opinion on all those crazy, crazy labels. I'm really sorry it took me so long to do a video. guys so today is gonna be a little bit of a rant i'm in a ranty mood i feel like there's so much bullshit put out there in the world by the transgender community which unfortunately is comprised mostly of social justice warriors so i'm kind of just going to address one by one the talking points that i hate the most being transgender is an aspect of what you are it shouldn't be who you are if the most interesting thing you have to describe yourself is that you're trans you're boring you should get like a hobby or a job or something and it's something you're born with like blue eyes, black hair, a dead twin. It's really not an accomplishment or something to be proud of. It just is what it is. Someone who doesn't want to date or fuck a tranny does not mean they're transphobic. It means they have a preference and you just don't fit the preference. Just because you can't get a date doesn't mean you can blame it on bigotry, okay? Stop expecting the world to adapt to you. Trans people make up, what, 0.3% of the population? You cannot expect 99.7% of the population to always accommodate you. And you know, like, being trans can definitely complicate certain situations and make things a little bit harder, but so does a lot of things. 
You could have been born with one leg or born blind or born deaf or anything. Take the struggles in and work harder for it. Work even harder than everyone else around you if that's what you have to do to get what you want. None of these are real. Stop trying to make them a real thing. It's not going to happen. I have started the hashtag 76 genders. Even though there are probably more like millions of gender, probably more like millions of gender. Millions of gender. There are one, two genders. Stop pushing for young children to transition. Hormones are a huge fucking decision, and it's a decision that leaves you sterile. It's no decision for a 10-year-old to make. And stop trivializing it. Like, it's not like Tylenol, you can just give a 10-year-old. Under no circumstance should you not tell a sexual partner that you are trans before fucking them, no matter how many trans advocates tell you that you don't have to. It's douchey to have sex with someone under false pretenses that large, no matter who it is. They and them and Z and Zer and Invader Zim pronouns are dumb. Stop accusing everyone who disagrees with you of being a transphobic. When you whine over trivial shit like being misgendered, it makes people not have sympathy when you have an actual issue to complain about. Your skin should be even thicker because you're transgender, not thinner. Being a victim is a choice. Don't forget that. Stop saying stupid shit like this. And that's all I have for today. I know that as soon as- You are listening to Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with your host, Dave Bourne. Call in at 702-470-7664 or Skype in. Username, Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. So that kind of went through a few different things that I want to talk about. Um, one, of course, this ridiculous, uh, you know, I'm whatever gender today and this gender tomorrow and the uh, everything that comes under, I guess, this non-binary gender. So I want to talk a little about that uh, as w well as where fucking people are learning this shit. And I don't know if that's just because they happen to um, be in that community or like, where does this shit even come from? Cause some of this shit would be like, like a guy who on the weekends dresses up like a girl uh, would be uh, a transvestite, you know, like there wouldn't be all these fucking pronouns and whatever. Um, the other thing is Kids getting um, starting to get hormones at young ages, and I've seen a, a few of those, and I want to talk a little about that. And then, of course, I want to talk about government and the bathroom laws and more discrimination laws, if those are, are, are coming, and the basic... Uh, I guess philosophy of a lot of these uh whatever they are gender ten gender people um so when it comes to the bathroom laws, you know a bunch of people boycotted North Carolina over it, which I think is ridiculous uh you didn't need them before I don't think you need more laws interfering with, you know, making sure people can go into certain bathrooms. If, first of all, it, it's, they're basing it, I think, off of this gender identity bullshit that we've been talking about, that they've been talking about, that, well, today I feel like a guy and tomorrow I feel like a girl, so I'm going to go to the bathroom that way. It, no. If you're a transsexual who looks like a girl go to the fucking girl's bathroom and if you're a transsexual looks like a guy go to the guy's bathroom no one's gonna make an issue out of it nobody's ever done that so i what is the need for that and then on top of it it's like the um i forget exactly what the law was but i guess it got uh overturned but it was i mean 
they had a, a law against it. So I, I don't believe they need that neither because it, the whole thing is just ridiculous. It's just you don't need any laws with bathrooms. Let it go. If fucking somebody inappropriately goes in a bathroom, you deal with it at that point, at that place. But as far as, you know, transsexuals using the bathroom of the gender of a different gen, you know, the gender they look like, they've been doing that for years and nobody says anything and there's no issue there. So it's... Basically, it seems like this is an issue that has been created. And again, out of a small percent of the population, you would think, and this is what the fucking government media does. They do it with everything. You would think that, damn, like fucking there's tons of transsexuals. There, There's, you know, 20 percent of the population are transsexuals or something. But it, it's not the case. So in schools, I think it's the same thing if you have a um, – so I brought up the girl Jazz, um, and she knew uh, – she considers herself – she has a girl brain and a boy body, and I'm not her. I can't – now she's 15, I think. I can't – say, uh, I guess there's been studies looking at brain matter. Um, You know, a lot of scientific shit to me is bullshit because one year it's this and the next year it's this. I mean, it science changes all the time as far as, oh, well, we did a different study. It's because they can never get studies uh, unbiased and blind enough to um, actually confirm things the way uh, they should be able to when it comes to stuff like that, Um, in my opinion. I mean, it depends what you're looking at. But when it comes to studies like this that are based on social constructs and things like that, they never get the fucking shit right. They just, they don't. Um, in my opinion, because they already have a most of the people that are doing them, they already have their hypothesis. Well, you should have a hypothesis, but they have their conclusions and it's it, it, they're always biased. Again, when it comes to stuff like that, there are scientific studies that I do put more uh, validity in than others. But you have things even with things being good for you. Oh, well, there was a new study out that this is good for you. And now there's an, I mean, you look at clinical trials of medications and they're, you would think they're really thorough, but they're, they're not. It, so it, it's, Jesus, it, it's, we have this perception, I think, that all of this stuff and that goes on are done by people that are so much smarter and so much more intelligent. And, and it's really not, (laughs) um, unfortunately, I mean, like everyone who's doing, you know, these scientific studies are Einstein and no, I mean, that guy was like a, you know, a once in a lifetime genius or, um, Edison or somebody like that you know, who had, maybe they were able to use more of their brain than the average person. I I don't know. But, I mean, that's not the majority of the people that are doing this. It's probably none of them, actually, that have the type of intelligence that uh, they would have, even though there are some people that are around today I think that have that level of intelligence, but, you know, maybe one or two or, you know, not a lot. Anyway, um, so I, I don't know what the fuck they're teaching in schools. I think it's fine to teach about transgender people and being different and things like that. But this, if they're teaching the fucking, I mean, first of all, 
public schools shouldn't exist and everybody should take their kids out of government schools anyway. But I mean, if they're teaching the gender fluid and the all that bullshit, that, that's crazy. Anyway, regarding the, you know, transitioning at a young age, that's how she felt that she had a girl brain and a boy body and the parents were around all the time and they felt that, you know, it's important when it comes to puberty because once you start puberty, there's things that happen that you can't reverse both ways by taking hormones and by not taking hormones. And, and they felt that it was, you know, the best decision and, and being 10 years old, I don't know. I mean, I think that it's something that you do know, um, you know, 10 is young, but at the same time, it's not, you know, two or three neither. And they had witnessed the behavior since she was a baby. So I think it's a case by case basis, but it's their still, still their body and self ownership. I, I know it's hard to say at what age, because I don't believe parents own their kids and what age do they really, you know, totally own themselves. I mean, I mean it's hard to say, um, but it's definitely by teenage years, if not earlier. Um, so I don't have a problem with people, you know, where their, their parents have witnessed all that, um, you know, starting to take hormones before puberty that, but that's a case by case on a case by case basis. I wouldn't advocate it. And I think in the, um, what, the clip was talking about with Blair White. I think she was talking about uh, transgendered people advocating for it. So I don't think that it should be something where, you know, you go around advocating for that. If it's something that the parents and the kid feel are the right thing to do. Like in her case, I mean, she's 15, you know, and she hasn't had, you know, she's going to get surgery, bottom surgery, but she has to be 18. Um, you know, obviously they did the right thing in that case. So I, don't think that there's an issue with that. I honestly don't. Especially, you know, when the parents and have seen all that. And, you know, people don't give kids enough credit as to knowing what they want. You know, um, I know, of course, that's a huge thing. But it's like, you know, kids know what they want, and especially at, you know, 10 years old. Um, they, you know, and I'm trying to think back to 10 years old. I mean, your personality's developed, your, it, there's a lot of things. So, um, I, again, I, I wouldn't, you know, go around advocating for it and saying, yeah, you should go do this, but I think, I don't necessarily think that people shouldn't, and it shouldn't be something that's made illegal or anything like that, neither. And I think even with surgery, there was a girl who got surgery at 16, I guess a pop star in Germany or somewhere in Europe, a European uh, pop girl who's transgender 
and she got surgery at 16. And as long as your body, the, the only issue I would see is just that your body's not fully developed. As long as your body's fully developed, and a lot of girls are fully developed at like 14, uh, then, and, and the doctor knows that, then I don't see any issue with it as soon as your body is fully developed. Now, I guess in the U.S. you got to be 18, but she could go to another country and have the operation. And I I don't know that the U.S. government wouldn't try to charge the fucking parents for that. Taking your kid to another country to... Because there's, there's another thing that's been going on is uh, with... And this is pretty fucked up because it's obviously not something the girl wants um, to perform uh, the operation to remove the the clitoris, the uh, basically female circumcision that they take a vacation to somewhere in Africa or something and then perform that and then bring the kid back. And they were talking about um, charges being brought for doing that. And. You know, even though it's legal in the place where you're doing it, it's not in the United States. So, um, you know, I would say that is basically uh, permanently damaging and assaulting another human being. It's not your right to do that. And I would say the same with circumcision, actually. You know, you're cutting off a piece of somebody's skin. And I know that it wasn't looked at that way in the past. But, you know, again, I don't believe that parents own their kids. So what right do they have? And in, in, you know, circumcision, at least it was for a reason. And they didn't think it had any um, significance later. Supposedly there are nerves uh, in the foreskin that during sex may or may not, you know, make sex better or whatever. Um, I don't know. So it, it's not as bad, but it, it's somewhat similar, but the cutting off of the clitoris, I mean, that's just, that's a fucking, way to take away sexual pleasure from them later is is totally what it is and it's fucking nuts so being that they are interfering with the freedom of somebody else they are assaulting someone essentially then they you know should be charged or something again i don't believe in the in the system here in the united states i think it's really fucked up but there's some uh, charge or something that should happen with that. But with, you know, having an operation of uh, sex change and, and under the, their consent, because um, usually that they do when they're a lot younger, the uh, cutting the, the clitoris, but uh, her doing that at 16 or something, I mean, I believe that, you know, she has the right to make that decision at that age. So this whole thing about I'm today, I'm 80 percent, whatever. So this one girl tried to she was on a show and she tried to defend this whole thing and say that she's genderqueer. She's married. Um, sometimes she dresses up. Um, sometimes she just looks casual, but she's a, you can tell she's a girl. She's always a girl, obviously. Um, she's married to a guy who is biolo- she's biologically a girl. He's biologically a guy, but she calls herself gender queer. What the fuck? about her she said well because i like to do this or i like to do that and again they're talking about gender identity but it's like what they did was take 
the and I understand rebelling against society as far as definitions created by society and what a boy is and what a girl is. But really what a boy is and what a girl is is just biologically chromosomes and parts and all that. If a girl, you know, boxes or, you know, goes shooting or whatever, that doesn't mean there are now they're all of a sudden a boy that day. So to they're a girl that likes to do those things. So I don't see any real, uh, in that case, especially any real uh, reason to call themselves that. And when it comes to, I guess, dressing up like a girl or dress, you know, especially like a girl can get away with wearing boyish clothes and still looking like a girl. A guy, you know, putting on makeup and a dress. But see, I would just call them a transvestite if they like to do that sometimes, unless that's how they're living their life. And that's a little different. That's when you get into the transgender people that actually are living their life as a woman or as a man and are taking hormones, or even if they're not taking hormones and they plan on that, that they feel like they're in the wrong body. Those are people that are diagnosed with gender dysphoria for all purposes. And and I don't believe you have to be diagnosed officially by a doctor, but those are the people that I would consider um, transgender, and you could say their gender identity is male or female when they weren't biologically male or female because of the fact that society sees them that way. And in the case of you know taking hormones, uh, growing boobs, or having them removed, or doing things like that, you know you're changing your body at the same time. So that I understand, and that I uh, I understand the labels there, and referring to someone as she or he. But this third gender, and this whack job who said there's a million genders or, or whatnot out there um, is just fucking nuts. And what's scarier is it's where are they learning this shit and who comes up with this shit? Seriously. And someone said, well, there's scientific evidence to back it up. And that's why I said, well, that doesn't mean anything um, because that one person or a couple people said, well, we did this experiment or this whatever. And obviously in that experiment, they were looking for a certain outcome. And that's usually the case. Um, so that to me has no validity. It doesn't mean anything. You, The only thing you have as a third gender is would be a genetic mutation. And that would be biological where you have hermaphrodites or you have people that, you know, they have their chromosomes are fucked up. Um, but that's occurring in nature by, you know, I don't say by accident, but whatever. Not just I feel masculine today, I feel feminine today. You know, that was fucking one of the most ridiculous things I ever heard. And it really has no basis in any reality. And it's it it's insane. Now, they have the freedom to do that. But then at the same time, and, and this was brought up in one of the clips, too, one of Blair's clips um, was that they a lot of them are activists and they use this to say how they're being oppressed and you know I'm a oppressed person I'm you know you have privilege and I don't you have uh they call people cisgender that are women women or men biologically that you have cisgender privilege and 
it, it, these are the people that scare me that want to make and and I'm sure it will come to this because the way the country's going you know there's going to be laws against uh you know hate laws uh hate speech laws uh, I mean things like that are right around the corner and things you can say on the internet and all of this stuff because it's getting just nuts it it really is and I still go back to the government because they're the ones that are trying to brainwash and educate, uh, I wouldn't call it education, but uh, have control of government schools and all of that. And and that's where a lot of it's uh, coming from. But that's about all the time we have for tonight. i like to thank everyone that tuned in. Um, I know tonight was... Uh, a lighter topic than usual, um, but tomorrow won't be, and we'll be talking all about uh, the DEA schedule uh, schedule wanting uh, Cray Tom. So be sure to tune in. To, uh, but I can't talk. Be sure to tune in for that. Thanks, everybody. The enforcement, but at the end of the day, each and every member should go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary, you need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime.